Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, now I will request Professor Bilkis. Professor Bilkis. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, uh, Milazim Sen Saab, and uh, I think your services um, regarding COVID have been remarkable. We started off with a very high percentage of positivity rate across the country as well as uh, in Azad Kashmir, and your efforts in educating the doctors and the uh, family physicians has shown its. Uh, effect and uh, alhamdulillah we are entering into the safer range as far as covid is concerned but now that we are talking about dengue today uh, uh, i'm sorry my connection lost uh, a few moments back when uh, yeah, professor abdul khalid yeah uh, but uh, but i lost connection when professor abdul khalid started his talk maybe he did talk about it but I would like to talk it talk about it again because the history dates back to the year 2011, when we were facing with a huge crisis of uh, COVID. I remember I was an associate professor at that time, and uh, uh, just talking about Mill. I'll just talk about Mill in order to give the exact picture because I was working there at that time as well. And uh, uh, believe you me, there were six wards absolutely allocated to, uh, to dengue. And all the patients were in the leaky phase. That was the biggest crisis we saw over the decade. And then over the approaching years, I remember the role played by Professor Faisal Masood Sahab. May Allah grant him highest place in Jannah. He played a key role in helping us understand the management, the pathogenesis, and the follow-up and monitoring of a dengue patient with the help of the education which was provided by the government of Punjab to the teams coming from Sri Lanka and um, uh, uh, Bangkok. And I very clearly remember Dr. Fernando those who were uh, in the field at that time, the senior lot, who are many of the uh, people I'm seeing on the screen, were actually managing the patients at that time. They would remember, I remember the distinct words of Dr. Fernando, who, was a, who is a pediatrician from Sri Lanka. His words were that no patient should die of dengue. And I remember that prior to this epidemic, uh, we used to be giving mega platelets blindly. If we opened the books up, which included all the reference books, yes. talking about, I remember Harrison, We I opened the book up, I very clearly remember, about the management of dengue patients. There was nothing like description of the leak syndrome. There was nothing like monitoring of a patient. There were no limitation as to not to give platelets. There was no advice about the amount of fluid, which I'm sure Professor Khalid would shortly be talking about, the type of fluid, when to give which fluid, and the 48 hours of the leaky phase, which were critical. This we learned in the year 2011. And following that, almost every year we did have the epidemic and the endemic. It is an endemic. It, uh, Professor Malazim, you would talk you would be shocked to hear that today the number is 161. But see, these are the statistics I have received just now. And I'm taking care of the patients for the past one week, and all those patients are in the leaky phase. None of the patients we are admitting are the usual dengue fever. So if they are all in the leaky phase, they are all the patients who require the critical 48 hours of monitoring. But the good news about it is that number one, it spreads due to mosquito. If we kill the mosquito, we can prevent the spread of the disease. So there is a limit as we know where to hit the, you know, uh, the uh, uh, evil in the bud. Number two, we can use mosquito repellents. Number three, we can, we can use all the preventive measures. Professor Khalid will be talking about that and everybody knows about it bearing uh, of mosquito repellents, prevention of uh, collection of uh, water and uh, the other reservoirs of the mosquito. And most importantly, there's an end to the disease. 
unlike COVID and other diseases, where the disease would go on and on and on, and we talked about the mild, moderate, and severe stages of COVID, and we did not know when the critical phase of COVID would end. In contrast to that, we are lucky in way of dengue that we know it's going to last for 48 hours. So if we are vigilant over those 48 hours, which I'm sure Professor Balak would be basically focusing upon, if we are vigilant in the monitoring of the patient, in giving the right amount of fluid, neither overhydrating nor underhydrating, and carefully um, uh, 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 monitoring the patient regarding output and the vitals, we can save the patient. And the most important part is the part, the role played by the timely referral by the family physicians. So I'm sure there are a number of family physicians on the group, or they might be learning, uh, listening to this uh, webinar later on. Please refer at the right moment when you pick up the warning signs which will be talked about by Professor Colin. So I, I leave it over here, and we'll be open for any questions. Professor. Uh,